If you were to ask a youth baseball team what their favorite position on the field is, I can almost guarantee you that every player would say pitching. Being a pitcher is one of the most popular positions on the field for many reasons. But even though that it's fun to be the focal point of the game and to rack up strikeouts, pitching is not all about throwing the ball. In today's Bullpen Bulletin, we're talking about PFPs, pitcher's fielding practice. I'm going to teach you exactly how to field your position when there's a chopper back to you or a bunt to either side of the field, so you can be the most complete pitcher that you can be. Hey team, I'm Coach Hart, this is Building Better Baseball, and this is the best place for baseball education. If we've never met, then welcome to the team. If we've already met, then welcome back. I can't wait to teach you how to field your position as a pitcher, but make sure you stick around to the end because I always have a free PDF downloadable guide for you that you can take with you when this video is done. But for now, let's get into PFPs. Number one, we're going to go over how to field a bunt to either side of the field. I'm going to do it as a right-handed thrower or a pitcher, but if you're left-handed, you can just switch it and make it opposite. So the most important thing that we want to do after we're done pitching is to get in our fielding position because we always have to remember we are the eighth fielder in the field once we release the ball. So after we release the ball and we go through our entire motion, we want to get into an athletic position and get ready to field our position. The first one we're going to do is if there's a bunt down the first baseline, okay? So let's say that the ball is right here down the first baseline. So the bunt comes out to the first baseline on this side. We're a right-handed pitcher, right? So after we throw the ball, we get into our athletic stance and we're ready to field our position, we see a bunt go down. We want to sprint to the ball and run as fast as we can to the ball so we can get there in the least amount of time possible. Once we get there, it's really important to control our body and to slow ourselves down, but we don't want to stop moving our feet. So what do we do? We chop our feet. If we get to the ball and we chop our feet, that will slow us down, but also keep our feet moving so we can control our body. We don't want to get all the way here in a sprint and then stop and then lose our balance like that, right? We want to chop our feet so we can slow ourselves down and that will also keep our feet moving so we can control our body and control our balance. So when we go here, we go here, we chop our feet, get here. Our last step before we grab the ball should be planting on our throwing leg, okay? Planting on our throwing leg. That's the last step that you want to do before you grab the ball. So when we get to the ball, we want to take our last step here, plant right here with our throwing leg, and make sure that we're ready in line to throw to first base. Because we don't want any extra movement. We don't want any extra movement once we pick up the ball. When we pick up the ball, we always pick it up with our hand, never our glove. We don't want to pick it up with our glove. We always want to pick it up with our hand. Now, if it's still moving and you need your glove to maybe field the ball, then that's okay, right? But if it comes to a complete stop and you're not there yet, you always want to pick the ball up with your hand, not your glove, all right? So you plant here like this, you take your hand, you bury it into the ground, make sure you get a good grip on the ball, and once you get up here like this, you're already in your throwing motion, right? Let's say that there's a very fast runner, right? And they're speeding down the first baseline. We don't want any extra movements, right? So if we get here, if we get here and don't have our plant leg ready and we go like this, once we pick up the ball, we're gonna have to set up to throw, right? So we're gonna get here and all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a shuffle or we're gonna have to do something to set ourselves up to throw. When there's a fast runner, we don't have time for that. All we have to do is pick up the ball and throw. So if it's right here, we want to get into our throwing motion and throwing stance already before we pick up the ball. So when we pick up the ball here, all we have to do is bring it up here like this and get ready to throw like that. Now, that is with a fast runner. With a slower runner who's just maybe sacrificing it and you know that you have a little bit more time to get it to first base, you can do a little shuffle and set your feet more right? If you have a slower runner, right? If you're coming here, coming here, you see that that runner's not even close to first base because they sacrificed it and they took their time. You can pick up the ball with your hand and you can take a little shuffle like this just to make sure you set your feet and throw. But if there is a fast runner, if there's a leadoff batter and they're bunting for a base hit and they're already halfway down the line before you even get off the mound, you don't want to waste any time. You want to make sure that as you're approaching the ball, remember, chop your feet so you can slow yourself down, but also keep your feet moving. When you get to the ball, you want to plant your throwing leg already. So that's already set, right? You're already in your throwing motion. You plant here, you pick up here. 
All you have to do once you pick up the ball is get it up into a throwing position and fire it to first base with no extra movement. So with a fast runner, you want to already be in your throwing stance and your throwing motion. With a little slower runner, you could pick up the ball and you can make sure you do a little shuffle just to make sure that you're ready to throw. And that is a bunt that's on the left side, on the first base side of the field. Now, if there's a bunt to the third base side, you're going away from first base. That's the difference. On the first base side, you're going towards first base and you're already in your throwing motion. In third base side, you're moving away from first base, okay? So it's kind of the same situation as when it's on first base, but you're moving away. So you need a little bit more plant, a little bit more strength, and a little bit more power in order to get it to first base. You also have less time, right? Because it's a longer throw. So when you get to the ball, when you get to the ball, you chop your feet, chop your feet like this. You want to field it here. Here, as you bend down, you're already planting on that throwing leg. You're bending down here, and all you need to do once you pick up the ball with your hand, remember you don't want to pick up with the glove, pick it up with your hand. Once you pick it up, all you need to do is boom, get up and throw, right? So third base side and first base side, it's kind of the same thing, the same situation with a right-handed pitcher. The most important things that you want to do is when you get off the mound, you sprint to the ball, but as you're approaching the ball, you chop your feet. Once we get ourselves set, we pick up the ball. Once we pick up the ball, all we have to do is step and throw, okay? Now, for a lefty, if you are doing your spin, okay, let's say that you're doing a spin. If I'm a lefty pitcher, right, and I throw the pitch like this, and I have a bunt that's on the third baseline right there, I need to get my body around the ball, right? You don't want to waste any movements, okay? As you're approaching the ball, it's the same thing. You want to chop your feet to slow yourself down, but you want to get your plant leg. Your plant leg and your throwing leg is your left leg, right? You want to get your left leg on the other side of the ball as you're approaching the ball. So let's say it's right there. I'm getting here. I'm getting here. And as I'm approaching, I'm taking my right foot here. My last step, similar to the right-handed pitcher, my last step is the plant foot in order to make the throw. Okay? So I'm whipping around like this. I'm planting here, right, with my throwing leg. Once I get my plant down, I reach down with my throwing hand like this. I reach down like this. And once I have this, all I need to do is step and throw. Once I have this, I plant here like this. Make sure it's planted. I reach down here like this. I step and I throw just like that. The biggest thing when you're fielding a bunt is no wasted movement, no wasted time. You always have fast runners who are trying to get down to first base. You want to get that ball and get it to first base in the least amount of time as possible. And if you're getting to the ball like this and you're not all set up and you're taking all these extra steps before you throw, that's just wasted time and you're giving the base runner a chance to get down to first base safely. So it's all about footwork. Footwork is key when you're fielding a bunt as a pitcher. So I hope you enjoyed this video about PFPs and you learned exactly how to field a bunt properly. If you'd like to take your game even further, I have a PDF downloadable guide for you that's down in the description. It's how to get more playing time on your team. If you're not getting enough playing time and you need some help in getting more playing time, this free guide, just go to my website, download it for free. It has five tips to help you get more playing time on your travel baseball team. And if you want to take your game even further than that, I have online training courses for players and coaches. Just visit my website, buildingbetterbaseball.com. Thanks for joining in today and thanks for spending some time with me today. I really hope this video helped you understand that pitching is more than just throwing the ball and striking people out, that it's a complete position. And once you can field your position properly, you will be a more complete pitcher. I'll see you next week for another edition of the Bullpen Bulletin.